The holiday season is most often full of joy and cheer, but what happens when the party is over? Coping with stress and depression, how to handle the holiday blues and help others do the same. That's today on Health Matters. Welcome to Health Matters, I'm Amanda Bacon. While the lights are no longer sparkling, the fun gatherings are over and for many, the cheer has passed. If that's where you're at today, experts say you are not alone. The important thing is that you notice it, recognize it, and learn how to deal with it. Well, there are so many factors that go into those holiday blues and that post-holiday letdown that follows for many. Jennifer Gray is the Chief Operations Officer at Capital Area Counseling here in Pierre. Jennifer, let's start with talking about what causes those holiday blues. Yep, so there's a lot of joy and a lot of stress around the holidays. Um, and those blues can be part of the um, letdown that happens around the holidays. People are visiting friends and family. Um, there's gifts to buy and gifts to return and then there's a lot of activities going on. And so those are happy, joyful things. But then also there can be the financial stresses that happen around the holidays. Um, not being able to see those friends and family that you wanna see. Um, as well as um, you know, possibly setting expectations for the holiday season and not having those met. The commercialization that happens around the mm -hmm. holidays and all the hype that goes into it. Right, so really that, that stress and, and the fatigue and some of those expectations really mm -hmm. play into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, so you can get more um, stress coming on because of those expectations and the fatigue um, can lead to feelings of depression and loneliness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, for people who don't necessarily feel like they're becoming depressed, then you may actually notice some of those symptoms in some other ways. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about those. Yeah. So yeah, if you're not feeling um, completely depressed, you can get headaches. Um, you can have problems with your sleep or with your appetite and just the high anxiety that can come around the holidays. So really other factors to look for as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So I would say that the question is, how do we know the difference from, I guess, from it going to just kind of being a bummer, you know, that, that mm -hmm. the holidays are over and all of that excitement and, and things is, is over. How do, we, how do we know the difference or, or what crosses it over from being just kind of a, a bummer to, you know, this, this is a depression? Sure. So if that lasts longer, so if your sadness increases and you are feeling um, more down and depressed for a, a lengthier time, the holidays are over, but you just feel like you're still in that slump. Um, if you are sleeping more or sleeping less, so if your sleeping pattern changes, if your eating pattern changes, um, if your self-esteem is just not where it was before, if you're getting more irritable or more angry, um, or you're isolating more. So, you know, there was a lot of hype around the holidays and you were around a lot of people, and then you do want to kind of not be around so many, but if that continues for a lengthy time and people are seeing that in you um, or you're just not feeling right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. So then I guess the question becomes, how do we combat it and how do we cope? Sure, yep, and um, one of the things that's important is to recognize where you're at. You know, what is the expectations that you have for yourself and to not as the holiday has gone by, mm -hmm. not to expect a whole bunch more out of yourself or out of others. Mm -hmm. um, get moving, get active, that helps as well to stay active. Look at your finances, make sure that you are setting goals for the finances, setting goals for yourself um, that are realistic. Mm -hmm. um, and even though you're around a lot of people during the holidays, don't isolate. So enjoy um, family and friends if you can and you know, get back on a regular schedule and routine. Right, makes sense. How about, um, I read something about putting the focus really on the season and mm -hmm. after the season as well, instead of kind of just that one day or those two days throughout the holiday season. Yeah, yeah. so make sure that you're focusing um, not on, sometimes people focus on what it could have been or should have been, mm -hmm. so comparing and contrasting from years in the past. So focusing on one season at a time and um, giving yourself some grace when it comes to your expectations. And so this year, you know, here's where we're at, and start making your own traditions and start making your own goals and expectations for you and your family. Right, right. How about, 
creating um, goodwill for others. How yeah. does, d does that go a long way? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Being able to volunteer in your community. Um, giving back to the community is a good way to help you feel connected to your community as well as it, it kind of gives a, a self-esteem booster that, you know, caring about others is helpful. Right, right. We all know that, that cocktail parties are uh, um, often a, a big part of, of the holiday celebrations for many, um, but that can be kind of a double-edged sword. <laughs> yep, absolutely. You want to make sure that you keep the alcohol, you, you know, the amount of alcohol that you drink um, under a, a norm for you, so no excessive drinking mm -hmm. during the holidays, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just one of those, another one of those keys to kind of help keep, keep things normal yep. um, for you as yep. well. Okay. And, and what about who you surround yourself with yeah, at absolutely. this time? Does, does that matter as well? <laughs> yeah, making sure that you're around healthy people and positive people and people who are a typical group for you mm -hmm. is important. Okay. So if you've kind of done all of those things or, or what seems to be the, the right things and you've tried to keep those in check, um, but those feelings just really aren't going away, um, then what do we do? Yep, so if it gets where you're, like you talked about, um, all those things and you tried and you're just not feeling well or someone else is noticing it, um, talk to your physician. And as well as there's a variety of counseling agencies in the area, capillary counseling, um, there's several different independent private um, counseling agencies as well that mm -hmm. definitely talking and reaching out to loved ones is good too. Mm -hmm. Talking to them about um, what they're seeing or what you're feeling and getting that support network in place for you mm -hmm. is a good way, but reaching out for professional help as well, mm -hmm. absolutely. Right, so really it kind of begins with just that, that making sure that I guess maybe some self-realization mm -hmm. um, and, and then moving forward, taking the initiative to move forward and, and do some of those things. Yeah, absolutely, and there's nothing wrong with asking for help. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of folks are, a lot of people are concerned, what does this look like? You know, mm -hmm. asking for help is an important way to help us get better and to heal and be healthier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really just part of our overall health, yeah. just another component. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, Jennifer, I want to thank you so much for, for taking the time to visit with us here today. I think this is such an important topic and, and very helpful when, you know, I think everybody kind of goes through mm -hmm. um, ups and downs and this is just really helpful to let people know where they're at and maybe what they need to do. So yep, thank absolutely. you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, Julie Moore wears many hats at Avera St. Mary's Foundation, and we always appreciate when she stops by to join us. One of those is the Suicide Prevention Training Coordinator. And Julie, this is a time of year when it's just incredibly important um, to keep tabs not only on ourselves but also on our loved ones. Exactly. This is kind of a can be a stressful time for a lot of people, and this is where we really need to take um, and be aware of not only ourselves but also what's going on in our friends and families' lives. Right, right. We've talked a little bit of, about some of the signs and symptoms and, and some of the tips, um, but you made an incredibly good point to me earlier when we were talking about this that there's a lot of times that you may be the last person to actually recognize this in yourself. That's why your family and friends are so important. That's exactly right. I mean, um, you're just slowly kind of going into that downhill spiral and you don't really realize what's going on where your family and friends may realize that there's a change in your behavior and something's not quite right. So they'll be usually be the first ones to pick up on it. Right, right. And as well, just things that you can be noticing about your friends and family. Yes. Um, there's a lot of things you in the one thing that I tell people to kind of watch is just a change in their behavior. Mm -hmm. If they're normally happy all the time and now they're just sad more, that's a change in behavior. If they normally want to go out and do a lot of stuff all the time mm -hmm. and now they just kind of want to stay home and don't do anything, that's another change of behavior that you need to be watching out for. Right. So how, how do we help? I mean, if, if we see that in somebody else um, and we have concern about someone that we love or that we care about, I guess, how do we step in, um, first of all, and, and when? Um, the one thing, you know, is when you start noticing those change of behaviors in your friend or your family member, to get them aside, someplace where you could just talk in kind of a relaxed environment, not where there's a lot of people around, and just start out by telling them, you know, I've noticed these things about you. You're not as outgoing. 
you're not as happy as you normally are. Do you want to tell me what's going on? And just really be the ears that they need. A lot of times they don't want advice from you, they just want someone to talk to and just listen to them and see what's going on in their life. You talk a lot to um, the, the groups and the people that you talk to um, about self-care, how important that is um, for ourselves, obviously, but helping our loved ones with that is really important as well. It is, you know, when someone is going through depression, you know, doing those self-care things, just things like taking that vitamin D, mm -hmm. um, doing the things that you enjoy doing, if there's that hobby, getting out and doing that exercising, eating right, drinking plenty of water, or just getting in a window and sitting in the nice warm sun is amazing what it will do for you, that light therapy. Mm -hmm. Those are just some of the things that you could do to take care of yourself. Right. So you see it all the time um, in a lot of the groups that you work with, the, the people that you talk to, but the support of family and friends is just so vital. So how do we, I guess, as, as family members and friends get over the idea of, oh, maybe I don't want to offend somebody by bringing something up. How, how do we get over that in ourselves to make sure that we're helping those we need to? I think if you just start that conversation, like I said before, acknowledging the things that you see and just let the conversation go, you know, keep saying, so how does that make you feel? What else mm -hmm. could you tell me about that? Is there anything else going on that you'd like to talk about? And let them kind of lead that conversation and you just be that listener. Right. And if they're not necessarily so responsive, don't give up. Don't give up exactly and don't push the issue, you know, come back and maybe another day and try it again. And you know, be there to support them in other ways, you know, maybe they don't want to talk about it now but continue to keep your eye on them and see what's going on with them. Right, right, makes sense. You have a few resources um, that you extend to people all, uh, often, often and all the time I, I see them um, coming across, um, you know, our, our social media sites, um, phone calls, conversations, text messages, <laughs> um, and you, you extend those well. Um, there's a phone number and a text number um, that you give often to people. And you don't have to be in crisis to use those numbers. If you need somebody to talk to, they're available. Yes. Um, if you're just having a bad day, you could call the 1-800 number, which is 1-800-273-8255 and just talk to someone. Just tell them what's going on in your life. We know that's talking to someone just um, will lower your anxiety level, getting that off your chest. The other resource we have is a text line number, it's crisis text line, and this is available 24-7 to anyone. And what you do is you type in 741, 741 where you'd normally put the phone number, and then down to where you talk to someone, you would type the word start and then you would push send and that's going to take you to this line and then you could text with someone. We know that this is really mm -hmm. the form of communication for kids and people in their 20s. They feel more comfortable talking to someone through text. Mm -hmm. So those are two just really, really important resources that we have. Right. So maybe if you're hesitant to do maybe that full, you know, outreach of talking to your physician or talking to a counselor, this is a really good place to start. It is a very good place to start. And if you could just start thinking, you know, I'm just having a bad day and to use one of those numbers before it gets to the point that you are in crisis, that's really what we want to get out to people is, you know, just to get it going right away instead of letting it go until it is a crisis situation. Right. We have no problem asking for help if we're sick or if we've broken something or hurt something. Um, and to really focus on ourselves as this just being part of our overall health has been so key. Yeah, mental health is really just as important as physical health and we really need to break that stigma that it is okay to ask for help. You know, no one asks to have depression just like no one asks to have a um, kidney failure. Right. It's a medical condition and we just need to treat it that way. Right, right. So the more you know and the more you understand the resources available, the better off you are. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much, Julie, as always, for joining us. We always appreciate having you here, and we look forward to the next time. Thank you. <laughs>
If you would like to see this program again or send the information to someone who you think may find it helpful, you can find us online. We're at OahiTV.com. Just select the Health Matters link. And as always, we'd love to hear from you. If you have something you'd like to see us talk about here on the program, you can just reach out to us through email. We're at HealthMatters at OahiTV.com. And remember, until next time, take care of yourself because your health matters.